Today I bring you my budget carnivore diet grocery haul. Now you might think that the carnivore diet has to be expensive, especially when you see people posting photo after photo of steak. But let me tell you, it does not have to be. In this video, I'm going to show you my budget carnivore diet grocery haul and give you some tips to save money. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, feel free to share and make sure to subscribe. And make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook where I share new posts every single day. Today I am going to be doing a budget carnivore diet grocery haul. For those of you who are new to my channel, I actually live in Australia. So the prices I talk about are specific to here. But in general, all the foods I mentioned today and all the tips are relevant no matter where in the world you are. If you want more tips on saving money on a carnivore diet, I do have a few other videos on the topic which I will link to at the end of this one and in the description box down below. So if you want more after you watch this video, you can check those out. The first thing I have in my budget carnivore diet grocery haul is eggs. These are an absolute staple in my diet. They are so versatile and so nutritious. Plus they are really inexpensive. You can buy a dozen eggs for $3.50 Australian, which equals out to only 30 cents an egg. These are absolutely a staple if you are on a carnivore diet or on a keto diet or on any diet. Eggs are such a superfood, and no matter where you are in the world, they aren't too expensive. You can eat them any time of day. <laughs> There's no rules here. <laughs> Super budget friendly and you can add these to any meal. Next up, we have canned fish. Again, this is really inexpensive and so nutritious. Cold water oily fish especially are really high in omega-3s. So that's fish such as salmon, mackerel, sardines, herring, and anchovies. What I have here is I have a tin of sardines. These are in spring water and I have a tin of mackerel that is in olive oil. Where you can, I would try to always buy your canned fish in spring water. Oftentimes the oils they are packed in are sunflower, canola, soybean, all extremely toxic. You should not be consuming these oils. If you can't find spring water, olive oil is the next best option. Tins like this only cost a dollar or two each, and something like this was $10. Now, if you are in Australia, one of the problems I find here is that it's really hard to find wild caught salmon, especially for a reasonable price. And foods like this, they're gonna last for ages. You can just keep these in your pantry. You don't have to worry about them going off or freezing them or anything like that. Yeah, this one's best before June, 2022, so over two years. And the next thing on my budget carnivore diet shopping list is minced meat, also known as ground meat. Here I have ground beef and this is only $11 a kilo. Now, before we go any further, I just wanna pause a moment and talk about the difference between 100% grass-fed meat and conventional meat. This is a subject that is pretty polarizing in the carnivore community but here's my take on it. The nutritional difference between the two is marginal. 100% grass-fed meat is going to be higher in omega-3s, it's gonna have more CLA, and be slightly higher in other vitamins and minerals. But like I said, the difference is only marginal. Eating any type of beef is better than eating no beef. So buy whatever is in your budget. If you can afford 100% grass-fed beef, then go for it. Be my guest. You are gonna get slightly better nutrition, but it's not that big of a difference. And another thing I'm just gonna mention before we move on is that if you are concerned about there being higher omega-6s in conventional beef, the reason this is a concern and the reason you want to have a one-to-one -one ratio between omega-3s and omega-6s is because both of these nutrients use the same pathway in the body to be converted. So if you are eating too many omega-6s, not very many omega-3s will be converted. 
but this only matters if you are consuming ALA, which is the type of omega-3 that is the precursor to the final nutrient. If you are eating omega-3 in its final converted form, then you're skipping this conversion process and the ratio between the two doesn't matter as much. Most of the omega-3 that is in beef, that's in lamb, that's in other land mammals, this is gonna be ALA and needs to be converted. And this is why the ratio matters. When you are eating omega-3s in things such as mackerel, sardines, uh, salmon, you are getting DHA and EPA. It doesn't have to be converted and the ratio isn't as relevant. So if you are concerned about the ratio in your meat, then add some cold water oily fish into your diet as well. And next up, we have roasts and larger cuts of meat. These are bigger cuts of beef, lamb, chicken, pork that are usually less expensive. For example, I have a whole roast chicken here. This is $14 per kilo. This whole chicken came to be $8. I also have some beef short ribs. These are $13 per kilo. You can buy a lamb shoulder for $12 per kilo, a beef blade roast for $12 per kilo as well. And when you cook something like this, yes, you can eat it right away, but you're also gonna have lots of leftovers, which you can have for several days to come. Now, depending on your palate, you might find some of these things on their own to be a bit bland. Honestly, a good salt can make all the difference in your cooking. Buy a pink salt or a sea salt that isn't already ground. A big bag is usually gonna cost you less than $5 and use this generously when you're cooking. Not only is it gonna improve the taste, but it's also gonna give you more sodium, which we need more of when we are on any version of a low carb diet. And if you do wanna use more spices than just salt, that is totally fine for most people. If you are really sensitive to plants, if you are struggling with autoimmunity though, there are some spices that are better than others. Anything that is a leaf is going to be your safest bet. So basil, thyme, dill, sage, chives, garlic powder, and paprika are also good. These are spices that are low in anti-nutrients and for most people aren't too inflammatory, especially when you're only consuming trace amounts of them, as you are with spices. Now, if you are not super sensitive to plants and you are doing carnivore more for general health or for fat loss, then you can probably include more spices as well. Another tip to add some flavor is to add a little bit of lemon or lime juice. Anyways, guys, that is all I have for you today. If you have any more tips on how to eat a carnivore diet on a budget, leave them in the comment section down below. If you wanna see what a day of eating that is less than $5 on the carnivore diet is like, you can click this video here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can check it out here. And if you're interested in getting started with keto or carnivore, you can check out my coaching programs here. Thank you guys for watching. If you have made it this far in the video, please remember to give me a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and I will see you next time. Bye guys.